Hello, and thank you for registering for this enablement session from SAP Partner Service Delivery. Please note that this session is being recorded. In the Recorded Connect session, your name may be visible to other people who are viewing the recording. If you have any objections, please disconnect at this time. We will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. If you experience any problems during the conference, please press star zero for operator assistance. I will now hand over to Richard to commence the session. Great. Thank you very much, Jasna. And uh, on behalf of everybody at SAP, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have taken the time to join today's session. What I'm going to do uh, in this session, which as you're probably aware is part of the regular monthly sessions that we've been running focusing on marketing related topics, is we're going to talk a little bit about rolling your own marketing campaigns. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever heard this expression before, roll your own. Uh, in Australia, um, you can go out and you can buy your own tobacco and cigarette papers and, uh, and you can roll your own cigarettes. So that's where, uh, that's where I got this expression from. So rather than going out and buying the cigarettes already pre-made in a packet, some people enjoy um, the, the process of rolling their own cigarettes. Some people actually like the tobacco that only comes uh, in this kind of format where you buy a pouch of the tobacco uh, and you roll your own cigarettes. Some people even um, make up their own blends of tobacco and roll their own cigarettes. So I thought that was quite a, a good way of articulating what this whole concept of building your own marketing campaigns was about. So hopefully uh, you know, I haven't offended any non-smokers out there um, talking about uh, rolling your own cigarettes, but as I said, I thought it was a really great way of, uh, of drawing a comparison between, uh, between this and something that you might be familiar with in the real world. So what is the agenda for today's session? What I'm going to do is we're going to talk about some of the basics of building marketing campaigns in the first instance. You know, and some of you who have joined my calls before will know I'm a bit of a fan of a guy called Stephen Covey who wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the things that Stephen Covey talks about is begin with the end in mind. So always make sure that before you start any kind of activity, any kind of marketing activity, matter of fact, just about any kind of activity at all, you always need to be thinking about, okay, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And then when you think about marketing campaigns, there's three real questions you have to ask yourself. And those three questions begin with why, who, and what, but we're going to talk about those in a lot more detail. Now, what I'm going to do in today's presentation is I'm going to uh, share with you the process that I use when I build marketing campaigns. And, um, you know, with this process, with this, this uh, activity of building your own marketing campaigns, there is no silver bullet. There is no one way that's the right way. There is only what works for you. But what I'm going to do is share some best practices that I've picked up and I've found have worked particularly well for me over the last 25 years of, of doing these kinds of things, both originally when I was running my own partner business and struggling with this concept of marketing, as well as today being part of the SAP Global team and being a person who uh, quite often builds marketing campaigns that are, uh, that are then published out to you as our partners for you to pick up and execute. So I'm going to run through that process. We're going to talk about, you know, the, if you like, the four steps that I go through or the four questions that I like to answer uh, as I'm going through and building my marketing campaigns. Then we're going to talk about the next steps. Once you've answered those questions, well, exactly what are you going to do to execute those campaigns? And what are some of the things and some of the tools that you can utilize to help you as you execute those campaigns? Those of you who've joined these calls over the last few months will know I never, ever tend to finish on time. I do have a tendency to talk a, a, a lot. Uh, maybe too much, some people might think, because when we have our Q&A sessions at the end, we usually don't have too many questions. I think a lot of people are ready for me to just be quiet and let them go back to their day-to-day -day activities. So um, this session is probably not going to run as long as the sessions traditionally do, but then, of course, I might get all excited about a particular topic and, and might go off in a particular tangent. 
So um, no guarantees, but that's the um, that's the that's the that's the plan, and that's the planned process that we're going to go through. So that's the agenda for today's session. So let's dive in to the the main content, and let's start with this concept of the campaign basics and beginning with the end in mind. And the first question I think that everybody needs to answer, no matter what it is you're doing from a, from a, a marketing perspective, is again, answer yourself the question, why are you building this campaign? And that might sound like a really dumb question to ask and you might go, well, it's the answer is obvious, you dummy. Um, the answer is I need to generate some leads. But there's lots of different reasons why you might um, build the, your different campaigns. And oftentimes, in order to make sure that you've got everybody inside your organization on the same page, it helps to cl very clearly define exactly what the purpose of the campaign is. Are we doing this to generate leads? Are we doing this to accelerate uh, a sales cycle? Are we doing this campaign to uh, you know, to re-engage or reactivate stalled prospects. So, as you go through that process and you answer that question, that will often tell you exactly what it is that you need to do in terms of what is the content of the campaign need to be about. And then you can sit down and start going through the process that I'm going to explain to you to build those campaigns. But, uh, again, I think it's really, really important to understand the campaigns that you build in many instances are just a starting point and oftentimes, and I've made this mistake myself when I was running my own partner business, oftentimes we look at campaigns as being a single bespoke activity. We're going to run a campaign, it's going to be wildly successful and we're going to be really thrilled or it's going to um, fall flat and we're going to be very, very disappointed. But I think one of the key things which determines whether or not a campaign is successful or not is really what you do after the campaign. So what are you going to do once you've, uh, you've executed your campaign? So let's say, for example, you've decided that I've got a, a marketing campaign that I've built that's going to have a very specific execution process. I'm going to send out uh, an electronic direct mail. I'm then going to follow that up with telemarketing. I'm then going to invite people to a webinar. Um, and then I'm going to follow up those people who attended with a particular document. And I'm also then going to follow up the people who didn't attend with a particular document. But then what do you do after that? So it's fair to say, and you've heard me talk about this before in, when we talk about the topic of marketing, what a lot of this is actually about, the, the holy grail of marketing, is to be in a position where you're not necessarily hunting for business, but you're being found. So that when a prospect makes up their mind that they're ready to go out and start looking for a solution to solve their particular business problem, that they immediately think of you. So many of the marketing activities that we do are really predicated on the idea that we're just going to happen to reach out and touch the right person at the right time and they're going to be already engaged or just about to start in a selection process. But what about the organizations that aren't in that process? If we identify those people, has it been a waste of our time? And my answer to that is absolutely not. So when you're judging the success of your campaigns, one of the things you need to look at is how many leads did I generate, but also what did I do with the information that I gathered as a result from talking with people or making contact with people who aren't necessarily in a purchasing process right now um, but are going to potentially go to market in six months, 12 months, a year, three years from now. Now, in order for that to work effectively, in order for you to make sure you capture those people, there's a couple of things you're going to need to have in place. You're going to need to have some kind of CRM system. And of course, for many of you, you're already utilizing an SAP solution for that. Uh, I know many SAP Business One partners, for example, utilize SAP Business One internally. And with our 8.82 release, which is going to come out to market very, very shortly, we're adding additional campaign management functionality into that. But I know a number of you who are on this call don't do SAP Business One. 
uh, you might be selling uh, business objects products or you might be selling business all in one or even business by design. The bottom line there is you need to have that system in place. Why? So you can capture those details of those people and then have a nurturing process. So equally important when you're building a campaign is you need to think about what am I going to do with those organizations who aren't ready to buy today? How am I going to keep in touch with them? How am I going to keep um, communicating with them and make sure that when they are ready to purchase, they do think about my organization before they think about anybody else? So that's where it's really, really critical to have this nurturing process. And we're going to talk a little bit about the role of social media in executing campaigns shortly, but social media is really, really critical in the nurturing process. If you've been thinking about reasons why you might want to get engaged around social media, why you might want to start engaging with people through LinkedIn or Twitter, why you might want to start um, you know, building and uh, having an active presence on Facebook, then this nurturing activity that occurs after a campaign has been executed is a really great reason to get engaged around that. So why are you building the campaign? That is the first question that you need to answer. And as I said, there's many different reasons for building the campaigns. So then the second thing you need to ask is, after you've answered the question why, is who is the target for your campaign? And this is, my, again, a lot of these questions that I'm going to be uh, articulating to you today, you know, it's, this is almost like uh, marketing for dummies, uh, but again, um, I'm, that's the position that I like to look at things from because uh, I'm no marketing genius. I, I haven't done a university degree in marketing or anything like that. So oftentimes making sure these things are spelled out clearly, I find, tends to work very well. So you need to think about who is the target for your campaign. Now we're not just talking about um, who is the, the, the customer. We're not just talking about what industry are they in, but we're also talking about the specific person inside the organization that you wish to reach. Because when you think about the different people who may be involved in making a selection decision or may be involved in the buying process inside your customer, there's going to be potentially different people. You're going to potentially have CFOs, you know, the finance teams, the finance leader inside an organization. Potentially you're going to be talking to an owner. Uh, if you're particularly focused on small businesses, you might be um, speaking specifically, or your campaign might be speaking specifically to the owner of that business. Perhaps you might also be wanting to talk to the, um, the individual users inside a business. Now traditional thinking says that you should be focusing your campaigns on C-level executives, CFO, CEO, uh, CIO, you know, your, your chief uh, information officer. And again, it's going to vary depending on the size of organization you're targeting. But don't forget um, one of the most effective ways to execute campaigns, particularly if you are operating in a market that does have a complex sales cycle where there are a number of people involved in the purchasing process. It can often be worthwhile thinking about do I need to provide or do I need to create different assets uh, as part of this campaign for the different people that I want to reach. And again, remember, when I talk about assets now, we're not just talking about the traditional marketing assets that we might have used in the past, direct mails, postcards, um, advertisements. We're also now thinking about the full range of, of content that we might want to build uh, and make available. So white papers, uh, videos that you might choose to publish out via your website or via YouTube, uh, content that you publish out via Twitter, content that you publish out via Facebook, blog content that you might want to write. So you need to think about each of the different targets that, that might be impacted by this campaign. And again, um, the more people you need to try and target, obviously the more complex a campaign can be. But again, if you begin with the end in mind and you spend some time planning out what it is you're trying to achieve before you start executing, 
obviously uh, you're going to have a greater degree of success and we're going to talk about some other best practices that are going to help you be successful with your marketing campaigns. The second thing is once you've determined who that target is for your campaign, you really do need to think about what is the business issue that they're trying to solve. Time and time again, I, I get the opportunity to spend face-to-face -face time with SAP partners of all types, whether they're um, business objects partners or business one partners, uh, business all-in-one partners or even systems integrators. And many times when I talk to them about the kinds of campaigns that they're running, whether it's a, uh, an integrated campaign which consists of, of, of direct mails or whether or not it's just a campaign that they're doing telemarketing. And oftentimes the campaign message is, are you looking to replace your current financial system? Now, I don't know about you, but to me that question is almost like the same as a dentist ringing up and saying, are you looking to have root canal therapy? Because for many people, um, the whole concept, the whole issue that they're dealing with of replacing their finance or business management systems is akin to having root canal therapy. It's painful uh, and it's something that they would rather avoid if possible. So. At the end of the day, nobody ever, I don't think, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, well, gee, today I'd like to buy a new business intelligence solution or today I'd like to buy a new ERP uh, application. They think about, today I need to solve a specific business problem. I need to get better control over my customer relationships. I need to figure out a way of reducing my inventory levels and, and increasing my number of stock turns. I need to find a better way uh, of giving people in my organization access to the information they need to help them answer questions that come in from customers. So you need to think about fundamentally what is the business issue. And if you're building campaigns that are around this concept of are you interested in replacing your financial systems? I would suggest that those kinds of campaigns aren't necessarily going to work so well. So think about what is the, the primary issue that an organization is trying to solve. And what are the secondary issues? Maybe there are two or three issues that you want to touch on with your campaign, these, these business pain points that you want to um, articulate out to your prospective customer. But I would hazard a guess and say you really don't want to touch on more than about three or four specific pain points in any given marketing campaign. You can deal with probably one major one and then three supplementary points, if you like, that, that add um, additional clarity or add additional reasons why a person should respond because not only are you going to solve this major problem um, for them, you're also going to solve a couple of these minor problems. So think about those business issues and make sure you articulate those very, very clearly. And this is one of the key reasons why having white papers, for example, uh, as offers that you can make to organizations can be particularly attractive if you're looking at ways of getting people to respond because at the end of the day, step one you want is you want them to respond. The main thing you want them to do is buy from you, uh, but you do in the first instance want them to respond and give you permission to continue the discussion. You need to have those offers in place. And of course the best way of building offers is build offers that um, that that are going to give them uh, information that helps them solve those business pain points. You'll recall that in uh, previous calls I've talked about my definition of marketing. And the definition of marketing we like to talk about is getting people with a need for your product or service to know, like, and trust you. So if you think about the marketing campaigns that you build, uh, in many instances a marketing campaign can address any one or all of those three specific aspects. Getting them to know who you are if it's a cold list that you've never dealt with. Getting them to like you, how do you do that? By providing them information that's valuable. And getting them to trust you by showing them how you've done this for people, uh, for other people in their industry. So as you're 
building your campaigns, you always need to be thinking about that definition of marketing. People with a need, getting them to know, like, and trust you. The third campaign basic that you need to factor in is think about what is the action that you want people to take. Now, this is a, a, a classic one, and, and you need to make the action compelling. To me, the um, action of getting them to come and download a white paper, that's not necessarily great. I mean, that can be one of the things that you want them to do uh, if they're not prepared to take the primary action. But your primary action, your primary call to action needs to be something very, very strong. And I would say, uh, I would suggest that really what you want them to do uh, is, is you want them to engage with you face to face, primarily. Um, you want them to try or to, or to take um, the time to try what it is that you have to offer. So again, going back to our definition of marketing, getting people with a need for your product or service to know, like, and trust you so that they try, buy, repeat buy from you and refer others to you. So, you know, the, the action that you really want them to take is to try what it is that you have to offer. Um, and the best way of doing that is by some kind of face-to-face -face activity. You want them to pick up the phone and call you and have a discussion. You want them to join a webinar or come to a seminar. You want them to, um, you know, to invite one of your people to come out and visit them. So the key message here is when you decide exactly what it is you, the key action that you want them to take, make it very, very clear. Make it very, very clear to them what the next step is. So you need to be specific, be clear, and be honest. Don't be afraid of telling them that the ideal next step for them to take is to have one of your team come out and talk with them face to face about their specific business issue. If that is the best next step which you believe is going to drive value for them. Okay, so there are three basics. Why, who, and what. Why are you building the campaign? Who's the target? And what action do you want people to take? So then once you've answered those campaign basics, you can then get into the process. Now, the process that works for me is very, very simple. And I'm going to take you through that now step by step. Step number one is that first of all, I go about the process of identifying the need. So that's an internal process that I go through. So this is where, for example, in your organization, if you are the marketing person, you will go and you will sit down with your sales team and you will ask them what it is that they fundamentally need done right now. Now, it, most traditional salespeople, and I know a few of the folks who are on today's call um, are, are probably salespeople. Um, if I go out and I visit partners, and I say, what can SAP do for you? The primary answer I usually get is you can give me more leads. And that is traditionally the answer that you will get from your sales team. When you go out and you're going through this process of identifying the need, they'll say to you, look, I need more leads. And that's fine, but then you need to drill down internally and say, okay, what are you going to do um, with those leads? What sort of leads do you need? Um, and then go back and potentially review some of the previous campaigns that you've got because it could well be that in your current CRM, in your current customer list, you have a huge number of names, a huge number of people who've already established some kind of relationship with you, who've already asked a question uh, or who you've already engaged with in some way, shape or form about a new BI, uh, ERP or CRM solution for them. And it could well be that the main need that you have is to reactivate those people. Now, one of the upcoming sessions we're going to talk about is how to accelerate the sales process at the end of quarter without giving away margin. So it could well be that one of the, camp one of the reasons why you might be executing a campaign is to speed up the sales cycle. So it may make sense for you to execute a campaign to people that your sales people are already engaged in discussions with to give them additional information that, or to give them additional 
um, content which helps push them towards that all-important decision where they say, yes, I want to buy the solution from you. So that's the first step I look at. I identify the need and I drill down because oftentimes the first articulated need is not necessarily the right one. Think about it when you go into a department store, for example. You're standing there, you're looking around, and somebody comes up to you and they say, hi, can I help you? And nine times out of ten, your usual response is, no, just looking. Why do you say that? Well, because it's usually the easiest answer to give, uh, and it's something that you're used to giving. But it's not necessarily the right answer. So again, I would encourage you, do what I do, drill down and ask those questions. Um, why? Why do you think we need more leads? What is, uh, what is it that you're looking for um, by getting new leads? Where are we at with the existing leads? Would our marketing dollars be better spent on some of those other activities, reactivating old prospects, uh, accelerating existing sales cycles, and so on? Step number two in the process that I go through is, of course, I've already identified who my audience is. I've gone through those three basics, so I then need to choose the theme. So what is the theme of my campaign going to be? And, for example, when I talk about a campaign theme, this is, if you like, you could almost say this is like the campaign tag or the campaign slogan or um, what it is that you're going to articulate out in the campaign. And there's three things that I usually look at and I build the theme around. Uh, and it's, the theme is usually driven by one of these three. Is there something which is specifically happening right now at this time of the year that I want to address? So classic example of this, at the end of any financial year or immediately after the end of the financial year. It's a great time to build a campaign that addresses the issue of, um, of the pain that people go through at the end of the financial year. When they're suddenly sitting there trying to pull all their data out of their existing systems and they suddenly realize, you know what? I need a new business management solution. I need a new reporting solution. I need a new business intelligence solution that's going to help me solve this problem. Because at that particular point in time, you are going to have a higher chance of them responding to a campaign which talks about that specific pain point. With a title like, Remember Last Year, when you said at the end of this financial year you wouldn't have the same challenges with your business systems again? Well, it's the new financial year. Did you have the same challenges? Did you have the same pain? And then work that down into a simple way of articulating the, um, you know, that, that specific pain point and your solution. Another one, think about small businesses. One of the best uh, campaigns that I've ever seen in terms of success when selling to small businesses. If you think about one of the biggest challenges for small business owners, because they're your target market, right? they're the decision maker, they're the people you need to contact, is the fact that nine times out of ten for many of those small business owners, they don't really own the business. The business owns them. And they're the last person to leave at the end of the day. They're the first person to get there, and they're the ones who are working all weekend, picking up the pieces and, and, and doing all the extra work. So you know, a great campaign theme that you might want to pick with people like that is go home early, because that's really what it is that they want to do. They don't want to implement a new ERP system. They don't want a business intelligence solution. What they want to do is they want to go home early so they can spend more time with their family, um, get back their life. So think about that from a, the theme perspective. So that's the time of year that it is in your particular country. What is the pain point that they're dealing with? Now, is there a specific challenge that you're I encountering in your country? For example, right now, with the economy being uh, still a quite a bit shaky, uh, and the, the challenges that many businesses have with um, getting credit. And the cost of credit is very, very high. So the pain that people might be encountering is that the cost of funds is high. So anything that they can get 
anything that they can do which is going to help reduce their bank overdraft, help reduce the amount of money that they have to borrow to keep funding their industry is going to be critical. So this is where I would encourage you, if you don't already do it, read the business journals, um, you know, watch if there's a, a, a program on your local television station that talks about uh, the, your specific industry. For example, here in Australia we have a number of programs which focus on small and mid-sized businesses. Watch those programs. Subscribe to um, the journalists. Read the blogs that are talking about these issues. They will often tell you what is topical at that particular point in time and that's what you want to build your campaign around. And of course the third one is industry specific. If there's something specifically happening in an industry, in your industry that you've chosen to focus on, that means that it is a great time for an organization to look at your particular product or solution. So that's step number two, is to choose that theme. Now, again, you don't have to be a marketing genius. Again, here in Australia, we have a program called the Groom Transfer. And on this program, they get three or four marketing agency experts who come in uh, and they sit there and they talk about you know, the wonderful art and science of marketing and building advertising campaigns. You know what? You don't have to be a marketing genius. You just have to be in touch with what those key issues are that your customers are dealing with and articulate it back in a way that they understand. So the best way to do that is what I cover in point number three. And I don't want to make it sound like all oh, this is incredibly simple because I know that it's not, uh, having been down this path myself. But step number three is be the audience. So many times um, we look at the activities that we do for marketing and we go out and we ask other people in, the, in, in our organization, hey, what do you think of this? You know, we go to the owner of the business and we ask the owner of the business, do they like the campaign? Now at the end of the day, I would have a, a, a guess and say that those are not the people who are your target market. Okay? So those are not the kinds of people who are going to buy your solution. So one of the things that you need to do is you need to not look at the, the problem from your perspective, but you need to think about it from a customer's perspective. Easily said, hard to do. This is one of the reasons why uh, in my seven steps to marketing success presentation I talk about the value of building, um, if you like, a customer council. Identifying who your ideal target customer is, going out into your current customer base and looking at which of those customers do you have that you'd like more of. And then get a number of those specific customers, those ideal target customers, form your own customer council and then take your marketing campaign idea to those people. Ask them what did they think of the, the, um, the campaign, how would they respond to the campaign and so on. And you know what, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on um, on research councils, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on market research. You can just get a couple of your favorite customers, uh, get them into a room, buy them pizza and beer and, and, and ask them the question, run these things past them. It's a great way of, uh, of getting that feedback. Fourth thing I need, to, uh, I need to think about when I'm building my campaigns is what are the marketing assets that I'm going to use? Do I need a direct mail piece? Um, does that need to be something which I will print? Does it need to be something which I send out via electronic direct mail? Do I need to have a postcard? Am I going to want to have multiple touches with this customer? And what are the different campaign assets that I'm going to need? Do I need to have white papers? What is my offer? Okay, what is the, what is the thing that I'm going to offer to the customer to make them pick up the phone or take the specific action that I want? So you need to think very, very carefully about that and itemize out what those marketing assets are. And then number five, which I put down under the concept of integrate and amplify, and this is something we talk about when we talk about social media. Do I need to integrate this campaign into some kind of social media activity as well? And if I do, what's my plan? Do I need to start tweeting out information do I need to um, 
you know, put content up on my Facebook page? Do I need to write blogs? Do I need to build a specific landing page or even a specific website that's dedicated to this particular campaign? In South Africa right now, it just started, today is Thursday, so it just started on Tuesday. Uh, a number of partners got together in South Africa and they're running a campaign called um, More Than Just Accounting. And the whole idea behind that campaign um, is that it's really around um, addressing those customers who have realized that their current system or their multiple disconnected systems is hindering their growth so they need a solution that does more than just accounting. There's radio spots that are going out with that campaign. They're doing street polls, uh, advertising via street polls, and all of that, the radio spots, the street polls, are all directing people back to a website which has been designed specifically to support this campaign at www.morethanjustaccounting.com. So when you're thinking about your campaigns, do you need to take that sort of approach? Do you need to build a dedicated website that ties in that allows you to deliver that message? You will know what's going to work effectively for you, but having gone down this process a number of times, it's actually quite and I don't want to be blase here and, and, and you know, have you sitting there thinking, well, it's easy for him to sit there and say, gee, it's all really, really easy because he's done it before. But um, these processes are actually quite simple and quite cost effective as well. All you need to have is the time to focus on it and do it properly. And let's face it, if this is an important activity for you, then it's worthwhile taking the time to do it the right way. So you've done that, you have given your thought, uh, you've determined your process, and as I said, that's the process that works for me. So now it's execution, it's launch time, you've built your campaign. So what are the best practices that, um, that, you, that you should be aware of? Again, for me nowadays, I never run any kind of activity without having a social media leg um, or a social media aspect to that activity. Why? Because, let's face it, there are so many people out there that you can engage with through social media and the time factor aside, it is one of the most cost effective ways to get in touch with those people. And asking yourself the question, should I use social media? Well, it's a question that should answer itself, but if it doesn't, if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't know whether or not social media is a good way to reach out to people on this topic, then build your listening station and start um, you know, listening to what's going on in social media. Is the topic that your campaign is focused on, is that a hot topic in social media? And again, if uh, you haven't joined some of my previous sessions and you're sitting there thinking, well, what the heck is a listening station? What's this guy talking about? I would encourage you to go back onto the partner enablement calendar and look at the archive sessions and take a look at the session I did on uh, utilizing social media. We talk about this concept of building a listening station. So then what are the tools that you can use? Well, yeah, at SAP, we spent a lot of time and a lot of money building the SAP virtual agency for you. What is the virtual agency? Uh, the virtual agency gives you the ability to go ahead and use a tool that is paid for by SAP that allows you to construct and run your own marketing campaigns. Now, it enables you to construct and run your own marketing campaigns using assets that have already been built by SAP. Um, but it also allows you to construct and build and run your own campaign from scratch. Uh, again, primarily though, it is designed to run those existing SAP built campaigns. But there's also other tools which you can use. Personally, I have a preference for one of these two tools, um, either Constant Contact or another product called Aweber. These allow you to build and manage your email marketing list to build and manage your response-based marketing lists uh, and they allow you to not only execute marketing campaigns but they also allow you to put response forms onto your websites and have auto responders back so you can start to automate your marketing campaigns. 
and they allow you to plug um, that functionality into your existing websites very, very quickly and easily. So I would encourage you, if you are just limping by right now on Excel spreadsheets, Microsoft Access databases and Microsoft Outlook, I would encourage you to take that next step <clears throat> and take a look at one of these tools. Again, Constant Contact or Aweber. Now that's my recommendation. That is not uh, SAP's recommendation. Um, these are not SAP sponsored companies or th that is not an official SAP marketing recommendation. Just Richard Duffy's recommendation to you based on what I've seen that works for existing partners uh, and what I've seen working for people in the small and mid-sized business space. Third step is measure and manage. Now, time and time again I get the opportunity to speak to partners and you know, the partners will say, well look, I'm going to mail out 4,000 mail pieces. And I, I always have to scratch my head and say, well, what if this is the most wildly successful direct mail campaign you've ever done? And all 4,000 of those people decide they're going to respond. What are you going to do? Can you manage a campaign that's that successful? And the answer is nine times, well, actually 10 times out of 10, no. But it would be a great situation to be in, but no, we really don't want to be in that situation. So you should only be um, executing your campaign to as many prospective customers as you can possibly manage at any given point in time. And the other thing as well you need to think about is what if, despite all your best efforts, you actually got it wrong. Maybe your message wasn't ideal. Maybe the campaign assets weren't right. Um, it's better to only email 100 and get no response than it is to email 4,000 and get no response. So again, that's really key. You should only execute a campaign for what you can manage. And then make sure that you're effectively measuring what's going on and that you have, um, you have good control over the process. Fourth point at execution time, and I'd just like to make a word about branding. What we do at SAP, um, using tools like the virtual agency uh, and using our, what we call our SAP approved partner branding is we have certain ways which we would like you to present uh, information. But at the end of the day, you are building your brand, okay? So one of the things that you need to be thinking about, and one of the primary reasons why you should start building and running your own campaigns, and not necessarily just taking SAP's campaigns, is that you are starting to build your own brand. Leverage the SAP partner brand, of course, which you have access to, but fundamentally at the end of the day, the business that you are trying to put out there as being the one that's going to solve the problem for your prospective customer is your organization. And leverage the power of the relationship that you have with SAP, but always make sure that it is your organization that is put out there in the forefront of your campaigns. So, um, looks like I have talked too much as usual, but we're just about wrapping up um, for today's session. So, next steps. If what I've said to you makes sense and you're now think, thinking, okay, yep, I'm sold, I like the idea, I like the process that you've articulated, now what am I going to do? Well, the very first thing that you can do, and I think there was an American president who said, in any given situation, the worst thing you can do is nothing. The next best thing is the wrong thing, but at least do something, okay? So my suggestion to you is make a start. Review what's available, define your goals, pick your assets, look at your marketing calendar, look at is there something specific happening um, that's gonna give you a time-related reason to go out and execute a campaign. Look at your industries, look at your country, what's happening in, your, in the industries that you sell to, in the countries in which you operate, that's going to give you a reason to go out and build and execute a campaign. Think about what's your goal? Do I want to um, generate new leads? Do I want to accelerate a sales cycle? Do I want to reactivate old prospects? Do I want to nurture existing prospects that I'm engaged in a, in a campaign with? 
is there a reason? Is there something new that's come out in your particular product? Business Intelligence 4.0 has just been released. Is it a great reason to go out and reach out to those existing prospects and tell them about it? With SAP Business One version 8.8, .8, for example, we've just released patch level 8, which now has integration to Business Intelligence On Demand. That, to me, is a great reason to go out and write to all of those prospects in the past who might have decided to do nothing. So think about all of these different things with your particular SAP solution that you take to market. What has just happened that is a reason to go out and reach to them, reach out to them? Do you have what you need in order to execute that campaign if you don't go back again through the process that I've articulated and build your assets? Content strategy, at the end of the day, if you're going to start affecting or executing effective marketing campaigns and ex executing effective nurturing campaigns and having a good, effective social media strategy, you need to have a content strategy. What's your content strategy? If you're sitting there thinking, what's he talking about, content strategy, what's that all about? I would encourage you, go out and check out a book from um, a lady called Anne Handley called Content Rules. Very, very good. Talks about the importance of content from a marketing perspective and how it touches on all those different areas that I've talked about. And of course, the final thing, if you need help, just ask. You can reach out to me at richard.duffy at sap.com. Uh, right now, I am pretty well stacked up with projects that I'm helping existing partners with, but I am willing to, um, to talk with you uh, to see how I can help you um, to, to achieve your marketing campaigns. Of course, there's lots of other people in SAP you can talk to. Talk to your partner service advisor about um, you know, what you're doing from a marketing campaign perspective. Talk to the SAP channel marketing representative in your country. The worst case scenario, if, there's, if you can't find anybody else to help you out, as I said, you can always drop me a note to richard.duffy at sap.com. So with that, I would like to bring today's session to a close, well, the formal part of today's session where I'm talking and, and tr delivering information to you. And I'd like to, um, on behalf of everybody at SAP, say thank you to you for joining today's session. I hope you got at least one little nugget of value from what I've presented today. Again, please feel free to provide your feedback, and Jasmine is uh, just popped up in a little chat link there, a URL which you can click on and log on with your S user number so you can provide the feedback. But uh, right now I'd like to throw open for Q&A.